Two long term problems, too many people, too few trees, written by Moti Nishani. In 1922, over 1500 of the world scientists, including more than half of all living Nobel Prize winners, signed the World Scientist Warning to Humanity. This document reflects growing concern about the state of the biosphere. Human beings and the natural world are on a collision course. Human activities inflict harass and often irreversible damage on the environment and on critical resources. If not checked, many of our current practice put at serious risk the future that we wish for human society and the planet and animal kingdoms and may so alter the living world that it will be unable to sustain life in a manner that we know. Fundamental changes are urgent if we are to avoid the collision our present course will bring about. In an unusual joint statement of the same year, the Royal Society of London and the US National Academy of Science concur, the future of our planet is in the balance. Sustainable development can be achieved, but only if irreversible degradation of the environment can be halted in time. The next 30 years may be crucial. The fact speak for themselves. The chances of contraction cancer, emphysema, or asthma are far higher now than they were a century ago. Even sperm count in many localities are worrisomely low. Many of us suffer from premature hearing loss, trashable, excessive noise. We work longer hours than our parents did and spend more time getting to and from work. We are troubled by the effect of such things as lead and dioxide on our children's intelligence and health. We think twice nowadays before plugging on hot summer day into possibly contaminated river, lakes or seas. We can no longer experience true wilderness. We are uneasy about poison in our food and drinks, in our homes and workplace, in our air, water and soil, in our brain and livers, in our pet domestic animal, lawns, and farms. We are surrounded by signs of global environmental decline worldwide. Some species of frog, salamander, and penguins are declining. We have apparently learned nothing from the extinction of the dodo and the great auk of the passenger pigeon and the moa. The continued existence in the wild of the most human-like mind we know of, those of api and Cetaceans, is in doubt. Entire fissures are collapsing every hour we add 10,000 people to our number acting as if there are no such thing as carrying capacity and future generation. As if we have learned nothing from the environmental failure of earlier civilization. We squander numberless resources unsustainably acting as if each and every resources is replaceable. We continue to produce plutonium and other long-lived poison even though we know that nothing on the earth can be safely sequestered for millennia. We continue to litter space when we fight pollution we typically try to partially clean things up after the fact instead of opting for the cheaper and healthier path of prevention. More harmful ultraviolet rays from the sun reaches us nowadays raising the specter of the skin cancer and cataract epidemic. Soil erosion, desertifications, and deforestation are proceeding up pace. We are seeing already the first sign of human induced climate change doing little more than crossing our fingers and praying that dire predictions of sizzling temperature, flood, tropical diseases, and mass migration will prove wrong. It takes a great deal of study and reflection to understand the nature, causes, consequences, and cure of just of one of these environmental ill, no comprehensive coverage of any single ecological issue can be undertaken in this brief introductory essay. Instead, I shall only limit myself to a few curious remarks about two major interrelated challenges over population and deforestation. In doing so, I hope to alert you to the serious of both and to the need for collective and personal actions. Human pollutions have always been in flux for the simple reason that every day some people die while others are born throughout most of the human existence. The number of birth was slightly higher than the number of dead. Consequently, world population grew at a very slow rate. A few hundred years ago, however, 
द सिचुएसन बिगिन टू चेंज स्पेशल इन एन इंडस्ट्रियल वर्ल्ड विद एडवांस इन न्यूट्रिशन सैनिटेशन एंड हेल्थ पीपल लिव लंगर एंड मोर अफ दिम रिच रिप्रोडक्टिव हेल्थ थर्स फर अ फर्स्ट टाइम इन आर स्पेसिस एक्जिस्टेंस द बैलेंस बिट्विन द नंबर अफ डेथ एंड अ बर्थ हेज बिन सिग्निफिकेन्टली डिस्टर्ब कन्सिक्वेंटली ड्यूरिंग द लास्ट थ्री सेंचुरी आर सो द ग्लोबल ह्यूमन पपुलेसन हेज बिन रैपिडली ग्रोइंग अप एवरी इयर इन फैक्ट द वर्ल्ड पपुलेसन ग्रू बाय मोर दैन एटी मिलियन पीपल इट इज फर इंस्टांस सोवरिंग टू क्रिकल दैट फर एवरी इलेवेन ह्यूमन बींग अलाइव नाउ ओनली वन वाज अलाइव इन द इयर सिक्सटीन फिफ्टी At just one concrete example of this exponential growth, consider Nepal. In 1951, Nepal population was 9 million. Less than half a century later, that number rose to 23 million, and with an annual growth rate of 2.5 percent, and with the average Nepali woman giving birth to a five children, there is no end in sight to this alarming growth. By this year end, there will be roughly 570 thousands. more nepal is alive than its beginning by the end of 1999 yet another 589000 will be added so that by the beginning of the third millennium nepal population will be over 24 million if this trend continue unchecked nepal population will double in just 28 years reaching by the year 2026 a total of some 46 million in 140 years If rapid growth continues, the number of the living Nepalese will be 368 million, roughly equal to the current combined population of North America continent, like Mexico, the United States, and Canada. On first sight, it may appear that when it comes to something as valuable as human being, the more we have, the better off we are. In some ways, this is true. All things being equal, more people are likely to generate more inventions, more technological breakthrough, and more corporate profit. But taken as a whole, most ecologists are convinced that the world is already overpopulated. Human population can't continue to grow indefinitely for a simple reason that the world itself is finite. To show this, let's consider Nepal again. Can this country comfortably supply 44 million people, let alone 368 million? More people will need even more food than they need now, and therefore the process of deforestation will continue so that eventually wild trees will vanish. As the population grows up, so does pollution of river, lake, air, drinking water, and soil. With more people, both town and a country become more crowded. The quality of life and the value we place. and human life will continue to erode when the population is stable increase in such things as food production the number of physicians or hospitals are often tend to amount to improve quality of life but such increase often fail to keep pace with population growth higher population density is also likely to exacerbate crime ethnic conflicts and warfare The American government to take another example estimate that some 60,000 American die each year from respiratory diseases which are in turn caused by the human made pollution 14 American died each day from asthma aggravated by air pollution three times the incidence of just 20 years ago needless to say the situation in cities like los angeles kathmandu mexico shanghai is even worse in all these cases the situation could be considerably improved by controlling pollution and population moreover the world as we have seen faces such frightening problem as desertification depletions of non renewable resources like petroleum natural gases helium acid rain loss of wildfire ozone layer depletions and the greenhouse effect the united nations 1993 document put it this way population size and rate of growth are key element in environmental change at any level of development increased populations increase energy use resources consumption and environmental stress so the more people the world has the more sort these problems are likely to become thus large and rapidly growing populations make decisive contributions to all environmental problems in the long run efforts to save the biosphere depend in part of our species ability to roll back its number yet there is a bright side to this otherwise grim tale 
It's true and common sense tell us that we can control population growth. The German and Swedish population, for example, defy world trend and are actually declining. In such overpopulated countries like China, Thailand and Egypt, the rate of population growth has slowed down remarkably thanks to concerned government action. How do these countries manage to reverse or slow down population growth? Many factors account for this remarkable decline. Modernization, literacy, media campaign, readily available family planning measures and contraceptives equal economic educational and legal opportunities for women. Human beings thus know how to control their number. What they have been lacking so far is the result to make use of this knowledge. Let us move to another long-term problem, the state of world trees. Owing to rapidly population growth, poverty and other factors, many third world people are forced to move into harvest, clean, burn or cultivate tropical forest. Thus, population pressures along with the new technologies and the affluent lifestyle of some people exacerbate the problem of deforestation. A country like Nepal has just so much arable land. So as the population grows, more and more people are forced to convert forests into farmland. They must also cut down more and more trees for fuel. The people of rich countries are also guilty to satisfy Westerners' insatiable demand for a hamburger. More and more tropical rainforests in countries like Brazil are cleared and converted into pastures. Some rich people also buy mahogany furniture, newspaper and other paper products in vast quantities. It is frightening to recall, for instance, how many trees must be failed to just produce the Sunday edition of New York Times. Many forests are also damaged by pollution, tourism, construction of houses and factories, and similar practice. Moreover, the productivity and general health of the world's forests is threatened by such things as the greenhouse effect, ozone layer depletion, airborne pollution, and acid rain. The deforestation crisis is not new. Many earlier civilizations, including those of the Middle East, New Mexico, and Eastern Island precipitated their own decline through overpopulation and deforestation. The difference is that we are destroying our forest faster and on a larger scale than ever before. Earlier in this century, forests covered around 40% of our total land area. By this century end, that figure will stand at about 25%. The deforestation of forests in turn contribute to such thing as a greenhouse effect, irreversible loss of many thousands of species of plant and animal, landslides, soil erosion, siltation of river and dams, drought and weather extremes. For instance, as the tree of Nepal are cut down, its topsoil is gradually being lost and its rain are likelier to cause devastating flood in India and Bangladesh. The eventual consequences of massive and ongoing deforestation are uncertain, but they are likely to damage the quality of life on Earth, reduce the number of life forms that share the planet with us, and hamper the ability of the biosphere to sustain life. Humanity can continue to fail tree, cross its finger, and hope for the best or it can take hold of its future and reverse the process of deforestation. We can save our forest by controlling our numbers and our aptitude. The list of remedies includes easing population pressure on tropical forests through effective investment in family planning effort and through education of third world people. Moves towards participatory democracies and a greater measure of economic sufficiencies may also help to stabilize the number of world people and tree. Another remedy would involve greater efficiency in the use of wood product and recycling. Another measure would provide financial incentives for preserving forest and for sustainable forestry. Still another promising but in short term costly step would involve massive tree plantation of abandoned deforested land and of unused land elsewhere, example in cities and along riverbank highways and reforestation will in turn have the added benefit of conserving biodiversity, pristine wilderness, topsoils and home for indigenous people and of minimizing desertification, flooding and regional declines in rainfall. Sometimes the steps that can save the world forest are surprisingly painless. Appropriate technology provide one way. In some Nepali villages, for example, more efficient cooking stove, 
which give off the same heat while using a less wood have been introduced. A Nepali woman remarked that this smokeless chulo has really reduced the smoke in my kitchen and used less firewood. Besides saving trees, such stuff allow villagers to devote less time to gathering firewood and more time to education and other rewarding activities. Many similar approaches are available. We can, if we want, have fewer people and more trees. We know that this can be done. We know how it can be done. We know that it ought to be done for our sake, for the sake of our children and for the sake of other creatures who share this planet with us. What we are still lacking is the wisdom, courage and compassion to convert this knowledge into reality.